Hello everyone, back to my another video. Are you interested how I can remove my background with a snap of a finger? Or maybe you're interested how I can blur my background with another snap of my finger? If you want to learn how I do this, continue watching this tutorial. So, basically, uh, I was really interested how the Google meets how the Microsoft Teams, Skype, Zoom, or other softwares so easily remove the background. So I thought that it would be really interesting tutorial for you to make this one. So I, I spent some time testing out what are the open source solutions for kind of this kind of results to achieve. And I found out that's pretty easy. And right now I can give you the whole overview of how I'm doing this. So for example, here I already have everything prepared. So I'm not writing the code here to not to waste your time and mine. I simply upload everything to GitHub for you and I'll add the readme description how you can use it. Basically, we need several codes. Uh, so I talked about open source solutions. So here is media pipe selfie segmentation pre-trained model that we can use to segment by ourselves. So basically what this is about, uh, we need to separate our uh, front end of our face and body from our background. So basically to achieve this, the easy solution is to use a segmentation. So we can separate this and then we can simply blur our background, remove it or add any other images we want. So basically there's a lot of other modes, but I'll cover this other time. I mean, in the next tutorial, but right now, I'm mostly interested in this one. So this one has a, a two different sizes model with is smaller one and larger one with the input sizes. But for best results, I, I believe it's better to use this one. So you may ask how to do this, how to use these models. Well, it's really simple. I have here a requirements file that you need to uh, create your virtual environment, install requirements, activate your environment, and you're good to go to test your model. So basically, uh, I, I wrote several uh, objects to make it way easier to use. So for example, I have here media pipe segmentation object. And if I'll enter here, there's a lot of uh, additional functions that makes our life way easier while using this model. As you can see, there is media pipe imported as media pipe and there is several other libraries that are helping us to achieve many results. So basically, if you want uh, to blur our background, we specify the ratio of blur. So higher the numbers, higher the blue. Background image, if it's equal to none, if we want to add some background image, we add it here. If we want to use background images for some kind of background uh, folder, here is the backgrounds. We, I'll, I'll show you how to use this. Give it a path of these images and it will load all images from the background. So here's the modal selection. Uh, and you can specify it's zero or one as, as specified in a description in a website I showed. And of course there is a threshold. So this is the threshold that tells us what's the confidence of the background in the foreground. So use it, basically we define all these parameters while creating this object. And there is another uh, simple function that allows us to change image while we are using this in a live webcam. So basically we, we will be able to switch this by pressing keyboard buttons. Next is a really simple call function that is called every time we give something to this uh, object. So this will be a frame and we give it an image frame, video frame or webcam frame and we are good to go to, well, to apply this segmentation. So basically, here is a selfie segmentation that we create here and, and we load this model here. To, to this model, we give a frame, it gives us results and results are the segmentation mask, as you can see. And uh, this is 1D array of self-segmentation mask, but because we are using images, usually images are 
RGB with the three layers, so we need to multiply it accordingly. And here's a treasure for confidence. That's kind of simple. And now, for example, if we are not using any background image, we'll use a blurred background of ourselves. And if we are not using a, if we are specify a background image, well, it will simply use it. And here we merge this stuff together and return a frame. Now let's go back to my main. And here to use this object, uh, I wrote a really cool engine object, another that we'll be able to apply all the objects uh, to run. Basically, uh, as a, for example, as a helper object is FPS metric. It, it will be it's way easier to use than implementing this FPS function to measure how fast our inference runs. I will simply add this object to this engine and it will simply run this. Additionally, we can uh, create our ourselves objects and we can add this. Only one uh, requirement is that the subject should have a call function that processes kind of frames and returns a process of frame, that's it. So if I go to my FPS metric, here we can kind of specify uh, the list, the, the average range of these FPS, the position where we want to add this on a frame, the font, the scale, color, thickness, line time, and etc. There's many things. And the simple thing is that we, we always call a uh, we have a call function where we can give a frame or not to give a frame. For example, if we give a frame, uh, this function will add uh, this kind of inform FPS information, the, the counts, number, uh, and etc., into our frame and return us process frame. Otherwise, if we are not giving a frame, it will simply skip this process to adding FPS to our frame and it will return us a number we want FPS float number, that's right. And that's all about this object. So let's go to my engine. That's one of the interesting, I think. So the, what's the purpose of this engine is that to process everything, image, webcam, video path, because all these uh, kind of inputs do the same stuff. They are processing the frames. But for example, sometimes we want to show it, we want to flip it we would like to save it somewhere, to write it. Uh, we don't want to, for example, process all the video. We want to take a part of, for example, middle of it, cut it, process, and write it somewhere. And that's it. And we can add output extension. Well, there's all the description I wrote for you, for example. And yeah. So here's a flip function. It's kind of very simple. and. Custom processing, this is the function that it's called every time these custom objects we create, for example, segmentation, FPS metric, and etc. Well, uh, it simply calls this custom processing functions every time. And next one is a display function. Well, this is kind of different and here, well, you always can modify this. It's up to you. I, I give it a set open source to play around how it works and say, well, it's up to you where you use it. But basically, we if we press here A button or D button, we can switch between uh, images in our list array that we loaded. And for example, now there is a process image. So simply what we do is we read an image, flip it, and apply custom processing function uh, objects to it and return that frame. What we do with the webcam? Well, we are not saving a video here, but well, we can return it as simply uh, processed webcam information. But if you want, as I said, you can modify it so you can record your webcam information. But usually, ha, I found this that it's way easier to have a video recording and 
then apply all this inform pre-processing on the recorded video and save a separate video. And this we can achieve with process video function. As you can see, it reads uh, all the specifications of our video it with hey FPS, how many frames they had, where it is, and it creates an output of it. The, the, simply the copy that adds an extension of, of it. And it applies the custom processing, as I said, and that's it. It displays, it writes it, and when it finishes, it releases it. And always we call our run function to run, whether it is an image, it is a uh, a video or it is a webcam. So right now we are in a place where I can run it and I'll show you how it works. So basically I can open the main and yeah, I'll run it. And as you can see, there is no background images. The hell is 0.3 and blue ratio is 45 by 45. So if I'll run this right now, well, there's a readme that I'll update later. So here is a information how to create virtual environment. And right now I can activate my virtual environment. And uh, yeah, I can run this Python main.py and it should work basically with a webcam where ID is zero. Let's see, it might it take some time to load, but basically, as you can see, it's pretty easy. You can see it segments me and blues my background where I have my wardrobe, bed, and this is basically my room. And well, you can see it's not perfect, but my goal is later in this, in this kind of near term tutorials to create a segmentation stuff tutorials, how we can trade on our own good model. And as you can see, it's pretty fast. It runs in 32 FPS on CPU, it's not GPU. So we basically can say that it, it's running in a real time. So right now, uh, okay, I close it. I press Q in my keyboard and it keeps closed. So right now I can add a background image, for example. I'll add it. Background image will equal to background image. And I run it again. Yeah. Basically, you can see it removes the background and why it's white because I chose my background to be white. Uh, that's pretty easy, isn't it? And you might see that when we use a blur, it, our background looks way better because well, you understand that it's not perfect. And when it's not perfect, we our blurred background is, we can see that, that where's the border with our good, uh, good confidence and bad confidence between foreground and background. So basically that's it. And right now there's another function that you might be really interested. For example, how on, I was, for example, Google Meets or Zoom or how we are adding the background. For example, we want to be in an office or somewhere else. So let's see, I'll remove this right now. I don't want to have a background. So I'll comment this. And here I have some kind of backgrounds. I have three images, backgrounds. I add the path to this folder and let's run it again. And you see that pretty cool how it works. Let's give it a few seconds to load. And you can see I'm right now in a beach. Well, you can see it separates my, my hair not that perfect as I would like to, but basically it does its job. So uh, if I switch to another background, there is kind of forest, forest, yeah. And I can switch to another one, it's an office. And basically, this is how everything is done in a in a Zoom, Microsoft Teams, in a Google Meet, Skype, or other software. It's pretty easy. Well, the whole stuff where where it lays is how good model we are using, how good it can separate the us, us for example, and how good it segments and. 
basically it's not that hard at all and you can use it wherever you want you can well basically uh i don't have a background green background etc so i want i'm using this to record for example this tutorial and i am running this engine on a video uh, so here i will give it a video path like video path to my recorded video and I'll run this to pre-process this video and save it as a copy to remove my background and basically I can blur it I can add the white white background and when I'm editing the video I can simply well remove it as a green screen and be on for example here on a code and that's basically it and yeah that's it about this code i'll add the video, whole text tutorial link to the video description i'll add the github link to video description and i hope you like this my short video introduction how i implemented this code view i review it and i hope you really can smash the like sm share the video subscribe if you can to my channel and if you have any questions or request how I would like how I can improve this I definitely gonna reply to you with uh, any suggestions and we'll see you in our next video thank you for watching and see you next time